Hello, my name is Michael Griggs. I am the Director of Clinical Services for BRAS. And over the next few minutes, I'm gonna go over the alarm menu on the uh, Vivo 65. So let me move a little bit closer here. Uh, so to open up the alarm menu, you're just gonna press the button underneath the word alarm. That opens up our alarm menu. And I'm just gonna move a little bit closer here so that you can see the, uh, see the screen. Uh, so, <clears throat> so what we're looking at here is uh, we're looking at one of three pages of alarms. So uh, as it stands right now, this is our main or our first page of our alarm uh, settings. Okay. Uh, you'll see that I have a high pressure, low pressure, uh, high and low tidal volume, high and low respiratory rate, high and low minute ventilation. Uh, navigation through the alarm menu is not unlike the other uh, two menus that we've gone over, the mode menu and the setup menu. Uh, you're just simply going to highlight the parameter that you want to change by either moving down from the top or you can also move up from the bottom. Um, and then uh, you can just simply increase or decrease a value uh, that you would uh, like to change. A couple of key alarms that I want to talk about just so that uh, I can explain how they're activated is that on the uh, Vivo 65, the apnea alarm. Uh, the apnea alarm on the Vivo 65 is associated with spontaneous effort. So if the ventilator is not recognizing any spontaneous effort coming from the patient, then the apnea alarm is uh, going to be activated. Okay, I currently have the apnea alarm turned off, uh, but I'm going to uh, change that to <coughs> a setting of five seconds. <clears throat> so I'm going to set that for five seconds. And if there's no spontaneous effort from the patient, then I'm going to get an apnea alarm. Okay, so if an alarm occurs on the 65, okay, you're going to get a message here in the window that states what type of alarm it is. I've got a red blinking light to show that it is a high priority alarm. And this is my alarm silence. So if I want to silence the alarm, I just simply press that button. I now have a, an indicator showing that my alarm is silenced and that silence occurs for 60 seconds, okay? Now, I'm going to press down on my test lung to um, have the ventilator recognize spontaneous effort. And one thing that you'll notice is that the apnea alarm goes away, okay? So I'm going to let go or stop uh, pressing on the test lung and in five seconds, we're going to get another apnea alarm activation, okay? so. Again, apnea on this device is associated with spontaneous breathing. The alarm will reset itself. If you do get some spontaneous effort, that alarm will fix itself. And then we'll also go off again um, if the uh, patient goes apneic, okay? Uh, you've got a message here that states that uh, if you had more than one alarm go off, uh, you will have uh, a message here that states that uh, that an alarm did go off, it was reset, um, and if you want to check to see when that alarm occurred, you can look in the alarm and event history for more information. So I'm going to go ahead and just clear that away. I'm going to highlight the apnea alarm. Oops, we're going to turn that off and um, move on to the next one. The disconnect alarm. Uh, the disconnect alarm I currently have turned on. Uh, the disconnect alarm um, seems to be, uh, would seem pretty self-explanatory. Um, I believe the disconnect alarm could also be called, uh, I like to call it a high leak alarm. Uh, because if the ventilator um, is obviously disconnected from the patient, uh, there is uh, um, the ability of the ventilator to recognize that. Um, so I'm just going to disconnect the test alarm from the uh, circuit. <coughs> You'll notice that uh, the disconnect alarm will wait and for about uh, 10 seconds or so and you will get your disconnect alarm activation. I currently have a low pressure alarm as well that is also going off. So there are multiple alarms that can give you an indication that the patient has been uh, disconnected. Okay, so uh, there is not one alarm on the device that's going to be the... Uh, uh, I guess the uh, 
the perfect alarm to recognize disconnection. So it is important for RTs at the bedside to make sure that you have a number of alarms that are set appropriately in order to recognize uh, a disconnect. Um, the circuit or the uh, circuit from the patient or the trach or the uh, mask, but um, uh, it's important to uh, just make that point that you need to make sure that your alarms are set appropriately. Uh, the next alarm I want to talk about is the rebreathing alarm. Uh, the rebreathing alarm is, uh, is uh, an alarm that um, if the ventilator recognizes uh, not enough leak or if there's a malfunction with an exhalation valve, uh, you want to be alerted to the fact that the patient could be at risk of rebreathing their exhaled CO2. So, for instance, here with my leak port, uh, this is the way the patient is able to exhale currently with this type of circuit. So I'm just going to put my finger over the uh, leak port and in about uh, 10 to 15 seconds, um, well, first of all, we're getting an obstruction alarm, um, but we will also get a rebreathing alarm here in another five seconds or so. And this is our rebreathing alarm. Okay, so again, uh, the ventilator is alerting us that there was some alarms that had gone off. Uh, we can look in the alarm event history for more information. Okay, but here is our rebreathing alarm. I'm going to go ahead and just lift my finger off of the uh, leak port, and you'll see that the rebreathing alarm will eventually go back to normal. Okay. Uh, the uh, rebreathing alarm will also work if there is an active exhalation valve circuit attached to the device. Again, if there's a malfunction with uh, any valve um, or if there's a malfunction going on where the ventilator is recognizing the fact that exhaled gas is returning to the uh, device, um, this is just an another way to um, uh, uh, another way to recognize that there's a problem that's going on. Finally, the last alarm that I want to go over is the obstruction alarm. <clears throat> the obstruction alarm, um, there are three types of settings for the obstruction alarm. I currently have it set for off. There is a high and a low, well, a low and a high setting, okay? Um, the obstruction alarm is activated uh, in one of two ways. Uh, number one, on the uh, inspiratory side, the ventilator is looking at a compliance calculation. Um, so if for whatever reason there is a low compliance during the inspiratory phase of uh, the breath, um, then the obstruction alarm can be activated. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, on the exhalation side, uh, if there is a tidal volume that is uh, below a, a specific threshold, then the obstruction alarm will also be activated. So this is a very quick overview of the uh, page one of our alarm settings. Um, in order to get to page two, I'm just simply going to hit the alarm button again and that scrolls me to page two. The page two alarms are uh, alarms that are uh, associated with our advanced diagnostic features. You know, so our n tidal CO2, our FiO2, and our SpO2. Uh, as you can see, we can set high and low values for uh, the uh, values associated with those advanced diagnostics. And then finally on page three, if I hit the alarm button again, it takes me to page three. And as you can see, the page three is our alarm and event history. Um, so what you're looking at here is that uh, you've got a number of uh, uh, colored uh, values. Okay, so everything in white that you see is going to be something associated with the ventilator, a ventilator change. Uh, there is a date and a time associated with every change that occurs on the device. But you can also see that there's also a date and a time associated with every alarm that occurs on the machine. Okay, so for instance, that rebreathing alarm uh, that we uh, uh, were just demonstrating, um, there is a uh, time when the rebreathing alarm was activated, and then you'll notice there's also a time when the uh, breathing alarm uh, stopped. So uh, the alarm and event history will display the last 200 events that have occurred on the machine. OK, 
okay, with a date and a time associated with all of those changes. Okay, you can either scroll down individually by moving the down arrow, or you can go page by page by hitting left and right, and that will scroll you through the different uh, um, items through the uh, through the menu. <clears throat> okay, so that's page three of three. If I hit that alarm button again, it'll take you back to page one. One thing I do want to mention, okay, is that the information button does also work. If you have any questions with regards to an alarm that uh, that uh, uh, that is uh, appearing on the screen, I can hit uh, simply highlight that alarm, hit my I button, and it's going to give me uh, a definition of what that alarm is, how it's activated as well as the minimum and maximum settings for that alarm. So great information here. This is a popular, uh, very popular button <clears throat> and um, an easy way to understand how each alarm is activated. Okay, so um, I, appreciate the, uh, I appreciate the time and um, I thank you for, uh, for allowing me to do the video.